Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Adobe Premiere scripting quick tip tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be explaining all the properties and methods for the QE project items, sequences, and tracks. I'm basically going to be going over all the available uh, extended functionality available for project items, sequences, and uh, tracks inside of the QE DOM. And basically what this will allow you to do is have a general idea of what is possible uh, for each of these item types. Not all of it is very well documented, so some of it you may have to experiment around a little bit. And today is more just kind of a guide as to what is possible, but you can listen through and if you hear something that you think will be something you might need for your work, then uh, you can go off and test it out. And if it's not supported, discover how to access it. Before we get started, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can check out uh, all of this listed in the GitHub link. You can follow us there for coding updates. And down in the description as well, you can follow us on Instagram for other updates. If you'd like to get more out of just these videos, then you can join our Discord server, get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and much more. And if you'd like to help support the YouTube channel and get cool perks at the same time, you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP on YouTube. So the way I did get all of these uh, QE properties and methods was to use the extend script object model viewer linked to the newest version of Adobe Premiere. And because of that, not all of the uh, arguments required for the methods are very detailed, but it does have all the list of all of the uh, methods and properties we can access. So I'm going to go through each section now and briefly describe what each one does. So first, let's go through project items. Project items are anything located in your project panel for the current open project. This can be footage, bins, or sequences, or anything like that. The three properties that we have access to using the QE uh, object model is to get the clip, the file path, and the name of our item. This will give you the actual uh, file path if it's an actual file related to that. If it's a bin, you're obviously not going to get a file path. The name is obviously the name of it, and the clip will reference the clip of that if it's used. Now, the methods are things that we can sort of do to uh, run functions or apply things instead of just reading information about the project items. So we have automate to sequence, contains speech track, so you can detect whether or not it has a speech track built in. You can create a proxy. You can get the metadata size if it contains it. You can check if the audio is conforming. This is normally something you see in the bottom corner of Premiere. Uh, when you first like bring in a large piece of footage, if it has to cache it, it'll either be audio conforming, generating peaks, or things like that. So we can check if it's in the process of conforming audio. We can check if it's generating the audio peaks. We can check if it's indexing. We can also check if our footage is offline, which would be useful if you're looking to replace uh, missing footage. We can check if it is pending, and we can also link media to it, which like I just said, if you're replacing stuff, may be useful to link some different media or overwrite a missing file. We can open in source, which I believe will just load it up in the panel here. And you can also rename it, which has a simple argument of the asset name of what we're going to rename our item here. And then lastly, we can set it to be offline if you want, which may be useful in some workflows. Now moving on to the next section, the QE sequence properties and methods. Just as a quick recap, a sequence is anything that contains multiple tracks, whether they're video or audio, as well as footage, and it's kind of your general uh, artboard or composition working area. So for properties, we have the current time indicator, which will give us information about where our time indicator is located. We can check the audio display format as well as the audio frame rate. You can return the editing mode of your current sequence, the field type, the GUID, which is a special uh, given identifier. You can get the endpoints. You can get the multicam information. Of course, we can get the name of our sequence. We can get the number of audio tracks and the number of video tracks in our sequence. We can also get the outpoint. We can get the pixel aspect ratio, which is apparently calculated for us. We can get the QE sequence player. We can get a list of all the presets, preview preset codecs, preview preset paths. We can set our render settings to use a max bit depth as well as a max render quality for this particular. We can check the video display format, the video frame rate, uh, the work endpoint, and the work outpoint. 
A lot of these are very useful and not available in the regular vanilla object model, such as video frame rate, I believe. I believe you can only access that with QE. So these are some very useful methods uh, for reading information about sequences. Now for the methods or things we can do, the list is quite long, so let's go through it. First, we have the ability to add tracks, which the arguments you may have to experiment a bit or do some digging to find. We have the option to close our sequence. We can create an export job for our sequence. Uh, if you want, you can delete the preview files for your sequence. And then we have our export options for our sequence where we can do an export direct. We can export uh, frames in these various image formats, which is also very useful. We also have the option to export to Adobe Media Encoder, also very useful. We have the ability to extract. We can flush our cache. Then we can do things like search for uh, audio tracks or video tracks. So we have get audio track at a certain index. We can check the empty bar times, which are the sort of spaces between footage detectable in QE, as you can see highlighted here. We can get the status if the export is complete. We can get our export file extension. We can also get the time of any green or red bars. And we can similarly to the audio track at, we can get a video track at a particular index. We can get our yellow bar times, which is related to green and red bar. We can check is incomplete background video effects. Not quite sure about that one, but you can experiment. We can check if a sequence is open. We can check dot left. We can also lock particular tracks, make current. We can mute tracks. We can even activate the razor tool to some degree. We have the option to remove audio tracks and we can also remove empty audio or video tracks, which is very useful if you want to do some cleanup. We also have more specific removal of tracks and removing video tracks based on their indices. We can render all, render audio, and render previews. So this will allow you to basically simulate pressing enter or doing other types of render settings. We can set the audio display format as well as the audio frame rate. We can set the current time indicator. We can set the in and out points of our composition as well as specifically set just the out or the in points uh, in a separate uh, method here. We can set our preview frame size as well as our preview preset path. We can set whether or not we're using the max bit depth as well as set if we're using the max render quality. We can set our video display format as well as our video frame size. We can set our in and out work points as well as our in and out points specifically. And just not to confuse this, our work in points are actually these points I was doing previously here. The uh, in and out points over here are when you're looking at it from the uh, project view here and using these in and out points, I believe. And then lastly, we have the option to sync lock tracks. Now that is a lot of methods and I don't know all of them, but that is a full list of them and hopefully some of them apply to your situation. Finally, let's go over the track properties and methods inside of QE. A track is one of these guys right here, which I currently have three video and three audio tracks. And this contains all of our track items or clips and we can do th a lot of things using QE now. So we can get the ID of the track, the index, which is corresponding basically to the number you see here. We can get the name of our track. We can get the number of components contained on our track. We can get the number of items on our track, which will give you all of the footage items and oftentimes even the blank footage items uh, hosted between them. We can also get the number of transitions on our current track, as well as the type, which I believe should give you an integer for whether or not it's a video or audio track. Now, finally, let's go over the methods, the type of things that we can kind of do functionality wise to our video or audio tracks. We have the ability to add an audio effect. We can get a component at a certain index, or we can get an item at a certain index along the particular uh, track we're on. We can get a transition at a certain index. We have the ability to insert into a track. We can also check whether or not a track is locked or whether a track is muted, which is very useful uh, to let you know if you have access to that track. We can check if a track is sync locked. We have the overwrite ability. We can also grab the razor on our track, which maybe will do a split operation. And then we have the ability to set whether or not it's locked or set whether or not it is a muted uh, track. And then finally, we have the ability to set the name of our track, which would be useful if you have a long list of tracks to stay organized. And you can also set the sync lock.
Now that's a full expansive list of all the QE project items, sequences, and track properties and methods. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the thumbs up button down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the code for this in the GitHub link. You can follow us there and try this out for yourself and improve it if you wish. And down in the description as well, you can follow us on Instagram for other updates. If you'd like to get more help outside these videos, you can join our Discord server and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube, you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or a VIP and get cool perks. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.